Hello everybody and welcome back to another Honkai Star Rail video. Today we are going to be reacting to EO's video as adventuring pulling without his 5 star light gun. Because here's the thing. Based on what I am told in this video, based on, based on whether, you know, we as a community come to the consensus, consensus of whether or not he is good without his 5 star light cone, is whether or not I will be pulling for him or not. If he is good without his 5 star light cone, there's about a 90% chance I pull on him. If he needs his light cone, there is about a 1% chance I pull up for him. 1%. It's only 1%, right? Because I do not... One, I don't have the facilities to pull for a character and their light cone right now. I would need absurd amounts of luck, and I don't want to spend it on trying to get a character I don't feel super passionate about, right? I don't want to spend that many pulls. But if I can pull him and he is insane with a free to play option and I don't need his five star light cone, I'll, I will gladly continue to consider, you know, legitimately pulling for him. But yeah, this is a reaction to EO's video. I trust him to 100% give me, you know, the correct, uh, a, a correct take, a good take and a good opinion. I'm going to pre like the video. I've never watched this, obviously. As same with all my other reactions. I've been wanting to watch this video for a while. Uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Make sure you subscribe to EO's uh, video. Make sure you subscribe to this one too. Let's talk about adventuring and his light cone. I want to go over that. I want to talk about it. I'm at the channels. Make sure you like the videos. And you subscribe to the channels. Because there's a lot of talk on his light cone being well bait or adventuring himself. Also, there is a portion of this. There's about a three minute portion. I was just looking at the chapter names where he's going to talk about a team comp and he's going to like, you know, kind of theory craft with a team comp. I'm going to kind of skip that, right? Because I'm not looking to play adventuring with just a very specific team comp. Although I know what characters he's talking about in this section. I, I've heard the rumors. I've heard, you know, I've heard all the theory crafting about team comps already. Um, well, not all of it, obviously, but I've heard some theory crafting about team comps. I know he's good with uh, Akron. I know I, I have Akron. He's going to be an absolutely nutty sustain, but I am going to skip this part just because I feel like I'm not the kind of person who really cares about specific team comps. I want to know if he's going to be good for my account as a whole. And I believe EO will, will definitely supply as much information as I need to you know, make that decision in all of the other sections of this video besides the team comp one being well bait and i feel like these are very nuanced topics that Let's are going to get extended into even more topics so as of right now i want to go over the fact that one adventuring's light cone is nasty in fact probably borderline busted but it's only busted for a particular thing and we're going to talk about it so Trace, okay what are we looking at here leverage for every 100 defense that makes sense of adventuring's defense that exceeds a certain value increases its own crit rate up to a maximum limit this is huge as someone looking for adventuring this okay is huge I talked about this earlier. So it has a maximum limit, which means like there's going to be a benchmark. You should try and reach this amount of, you should reach this amount of defense for the maximum, uh, maximum benefit. A couple different videos, but I'll reference it here. The thing that will make adventuring one of, if not the best sustain in the game, is the fact that he does everything. And what mm -hmm. we consider the best sustain, Hu Xuan, is because she does things that a sustain should not only do, right? Not only does she boost your damage and crit value, she also sustains the team, she mitigates damage, and she can entangle enemies, which a lot of people don't really look into that fact. But being able to entangle your enemies all across the board, right? A full AoE entanglement can... <laughs> yeah help you significantly in certain battles or certain okay. areas, yeah so she does her own form of damage it's just not a lot we take this over to adventuring now yeah having the trace leverage is nutty for every 100 of adventuring's defense he increases his own crit rate up to a maximum value if this is really low like 15 percent to be fair this won't really matter if this is something mm -hmm. bonkers like 40 plus percent this will completely change how you should build adventuring this exactly so once we get the character's exact numbers, and I think we already do, right? I think this is being recorded before like people started playing him on the test realm. I'm not watching the test realm. When the characters come when the character comes out and we get like our our videos on like release of the actual guides for the character in the game on the you know, in the actual game, and people are starting to test around with them in the first few days of the patch, that is whenever I will be officially making my full decision. 
but I mean, I'm definitely opening to some pre convincing. This will make adventuring, adventuring a tank and, and not like a star rail version of a tank or definition of a tank. I mean, a literal def the MMO version of a tank is someone who takes all the hits and then punches you in your face, right? This mm -hmm. is what adventuring becomes. We might actually have our first true tank in the game. The definition of a true tank nice. we might have him in the game. Let's continue. Hot hand. When battle starts, grants all allies a fortified wager shield whose shield is equal to a certain percentage of the one provided by the skill, lasting for a certain number of turns. That's great. This is a this is a technique. Okay, this applies to the technique. Whatever. Okay. Cool. After an ally with fortified wager launches. So that's just you start battle and you get a shield. Follow up attack. Pay attention. Adventuring accumulates one blind bet point. These are the points that you see when you're playing the game through the story mode. These are what accumulate at the beginning or, or during his turn. Okay. This effect can trigger up to a certain number of times. Its trigger count resets at the start of Aventurine's turn. This is going to make or break. Listen, this is going to make or break. I won't say fast Aventurine. We'll say moderate speed Aventurine, yeah? The 134. This is going to make or break whether or not you run 134 and that becomes very standard or no speed, yeah? This is what happens. After Aventurine launches his talents, follow up attack. Provides all allies with a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage. Obviously, that's the shield. And additionally, grants a fortified wager that can block a certain amount of damage to the ally with the lowest shield effect, lasting for a certain number of turns. Y'all know how I like follow-up teams? Okay. This is by far, you you have... That was a lot of reading. Perfect infinite shielder. You have the perfect infinite Absolutely. shielder. Absolutely. Just looking at these alone, these... That is crazy. Just, just infinite well, shields. You have the potential to have the best sustain in the game, which means you, you never die. You have, mm -hmm. he's doing his own damage, and it looks like, you know, right, his kit might be based off defense like other, other characters. And then you have the fact that he also dishes out follow-up attacks. Chat is I would like to know, I would like it to be noted, I have pretty decent defense relics. Uh, so unless they power creep those relics, which they probably will, they'll come out with better defense relics. Come on. Um, they'll come out with a better set and it'll work a lot better for him, but I have, I have a pretty good set that I could slap on him pretty much instantly if I needed to saying IPC emergency caliber Cal hold on, hold on. This goes, oh, in the no. video. this goes in as long as I don't get copyrighted, this goes in the video caliber. I know what you just did. I know what you just is about did. to go off. I know what you just did. You, someone sub up. Someone give him a sub right now. Let's go to the light cone. Let's go to Let's the light, go to light cone. <laughs> now, Let's go to the light cone. Change this name because this is a long ass. Let's go to the light. Increases the wearer's defense by forty percent. That's big. Free stats. Okay. That's a free chest piece right there. Now you yep. get the chest piece for defense. When the wearer provides a shield to an ally, the wearer's crit damage increases by forty percent, lasting for two turns. When the wearer's follow up attack. That's that's also almost a chest piece. Like a chest piece of 62% crit damage, right? At max? This is 40%. So so just just in stats, one line, not even a one complete sentence in. It has 40% more defense. Oh never mind. Never mind. There's a there's a period there. So two lines in. And then whenever he applies a shield to an ally, which is all the time, like he's gonna be doing it at least like once a turn, probably. Once a turn, once every two turns at the most, it's gonna take. And it's going to last for two turns, 40% more crit damage. Attack hits an enemy target. There's a 100% base chance to increase the damage taken by the attack enemy target by 10%, lasting for two turns. Yep. So when he does a follow-up attack, he puts a... Yeah, that... Okay, so the debuff comes from this. It puts a 100% base chance to inflict the damage taken by the attack enemy target by 10%. For Early two turns. In the video, I said that this light cone was busted. But it was only busted for a certain thing. That certain thing is adventuring. I talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. I talk about it so often that I don't understand how people are still arguing with me against it. The game is moving into the direction we are evolving into what could be considered a new meta, but I haven't used that term yet. We are moving into territory where you need to build a character for the character to do that thing. And then you're moving into um, team. It's it's no longer, hey man, slap everybody on the team, funnel it to one character, they all do it. This character, yeah. at a kit level, is not for anything not follow up attacking, right? Okay. Because he loses value 
when you play him in a team that does not have follow-up attacks in the team. Okay. Because the key thing in his kit to get more stacks, to create infinite shield, to protect your team, to sustain your team, is a follow-up attack. There are only a couple characters that operate that way, right? So now you have a perfect sustain specifically for follow-up attacking characters, follow-up attacking teams. Okay. This is perfect. This light cone is something I'm not going to say that it is. So, okay. So here's the thing. Here, here's, here's the thing. My account, I, I used to consider it like, my account is a, like, there's like dot focused accounts, damage over time. Uh, and then, and then there was follow-up attack accounts, follow-up accounts, right? And depending on what characters you pulled for, if you pulled for, if you went for a big Gwenaif, if you went for Gwenaif and Eidolons, and you built out a Sampo, or you built out a Serval, or you built out, you know, you, you pulled and built a Kafka, or a, uh, well, more like and, because if you pull for Kafka, you definitely try for Black Swan, uh, and a Black Swan. Uh, and then you probably went for Akron because those two characters put debuffs on, uh, put hella debuffs because dots are debuffs. Um, that is what I would consider a damage over time account. That is, you have so much damage over that you farm the dot set like crazy. So many of your team comps and, and damage there is damage over time, right? And then, and, and then you can even have like the fire MC, which places burns, crazy bunch of things like that. You know what I mean? Okay, and then, right, there were like follow-up accounts. So characters who didn't pull for, you know, Kafka, Black Swan, typically those were probably accounts that, you know, at least if you had to choose, you didn't just get a copy of everybody, those were probably accounts that got Jingyuan, Blade, maybe went for Topaz, you got a free Doctor Ratio, maybe have a Himiko if you got, if you got lucky, if you got lucky, you got a uh, Clara. Um, and that's what my account is. I have a Jingyuan, a Blade, a Himiko, a Clara. I even started building out my Herda pretty much only for pure fiction. She is horrible with anything else. I put her in a very budget set. I just put a bunch of random pieces on her just so she could work with pure fiction. And she like did her job at the bare minimum. Um, QQ, but like QQ really doesn't put on her, uh, do her follow-up attack very often. Anyway, the characters that I added, unfortunately for me, I didn't pull for Topaz. I didn't all in on the follow-up attack meta. If I had Topaz, I think that this would be an easy pull for me, but I feel as though I personally am losing value if I pull for him, I pull for his light cone, I go hard on, adve I go hard on adventuring, and then I don't go hard on... And then I feel like I would need a Topaz... I'd feel bad if I didn't have a Topaz. Now, let me just say, those are probably the only two characters that I really need, right? Those are, those are the two uh, to, you know, go back to basically having a, a major broken follow-up attack account. Uh, but I feel like my account kind of, like, drifted away from that. It's no longer like, I have Don Hong IL now. I have, I have Jing Liu now. I have, uh, I pulled for Acheron. And pulling for Acheron made me actually build my welt. So I have a lot of characters that build team comps that have nothing to do with follow-up attacks. It's not all about follow-up attacks anymore on my account. It's not just black and white anymore. And that kind of comes with the, with the territory of the game being more uh, diverse. Basically, like EO just said, there, there really aren't such a thing as you can just have a dot account, you can just have a follow-up account, right? It's more like teams. You have a Kafka Black Swan team where if you're fighting a boss that's, you know, has mechanics that get countered by damage over times or a boss that is, you know, lightning wind uh, weakness, then you throw the Kafka Black Swan duo on there and they go crazy. They go crazy. And then you can probably put on a, I don't know, what, what sustain do you pair with them? I mean, there's probably no, like, Sustain that's meant for them. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking on my. Maybe it's Huo Huo. I think Huo Huo works really well with them. Um, yeah. And then you do that, and then you put like Pela shred the defense. Whatever, whatever you want to do there, right? Um, or yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, 
And then you have a team, you have an Acheron team, which is a different team. Maybe you still, if you pulled for Black Swan and uh, Kafka, you use them with Acheron to put debuffs on through dots. But usually an Acheron team, especially if you've got E2, you only need one Nihility character. So you can go like Black Swan. Uh, no, not Black Swan. Uh, you go Acheron and then Pela. And then you'll probably go for uh, Aventuring here because he can put a debuff on uh, the enemies. And then you can put on Welt. You can add a Sparkle to her if you have the E1. Or if not, you're going for that second Hility character there. So, and then, right, you have another team comp, which would be like a Blade Jing Liu team comp, which would be Blade follow-up attack based. That would go hard. Which you actually don't want to put Aventurine on there because Aventurine will give Blade a shield and then Blade will get a, his damage reduced less, which will make him do follow up attacks less, which will make Aventurine do his shield less. It's like a horrible combo. It, that is an anti combo. Uh, that wouldn't be great. Um, or you do like a. And then you could do like hyper carries, like uh, Blade hyper carry. You could do Jing Liu hyper carry. You could do Don Hong IO hyper carry with uh sparkle is definitely his best uh, grouping it's just like it's more about team comp individual like four character team comps themselves rather than like okay what's the weakness oh they're weak to fire i think i'll put my himiko here because like anyone works with baronia kinda you know and ruan may isn't out yet and even when ruan may came out that was one of the first you know things where it's like oh okay now double dps is actually a lot more vi uh viable if you put a ruan may on there because she can buff both of them because she puts the buff on herself which kind of like spreads it to her team you know she doesn't put like a buff on a teammate that lasts for a certain amount of turns an individual teammate she buffs the whole team with her buffs so everybody can benefit from her uh so yeah um i don't know guys uh it's about team comps now, and I just don't feel like I have the god tier team comp for him. And I would love, I, I think it'd be cool if I made a adventuring uh, Topaz, Dr. Ratio, and then whoever else, uh, probably a by Ruan May. Uh, that I, I think it would be awesome to make that team comp. That team comp sounds awesome. I could put on a Sparkle 2 in that team comp, that would be great. Uh, Put a Brony in that team comp. I, I think really any harmony would work. Uh, some probably better than others, but I think that would be a great team comp. But other than that, I don't really see it. Right? I think Aventuring would be great. It'd be a little rough for Clara because actually you want Clara to get attacked, and preservation units naturally have a higher chance of them getting attacked. So unless the enemies did AOEs, that would actually kind of debuff a Clara, even though Clara's you know follow up attacks would help Aventuring out. I don't know. I just don't know how this character would fit into my account, as well as maybe waiting for the next sustain character to come out and then using them. I know I just did a massive rant about that. I, did, I just did a lot of yapping, but that's basically what I'm trying to say. What team comp am I trying to build if I get this character? Because if I get him, right, everyone says his, his, uh, his thing is cracked, but you don't need it. You only need it if you're going to go, you know, use a specific part of him. But if you're not using that specific part of him, in my opinion, you know, I feel like you're kind of missing out on a lot of the character's functionality. You know, he could basically be a sub DPS, um, I, at least at the moment, I believe, um, until we see his numbers that maybe are really low and prove otherwise. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And then I feel like I would basically be required to go for a Topaz and kick off the whole follow-up character. And, and like one day, Another character will come that is even more valuable and buffs follow-up attacks than Topaz, right? I don't think Topaz, maybe, maybe, maybe she does, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, people think maybe Topaz's increase the damage follow-up attacks due to an enemy character is, like, really special and kind of transcends power creep. It's always something that, like, no matter what else of her gets power creeped, She'll always have this to buff follow up attacks. I guarantee there's going to be someone else who just straight up increases the damage of follow up attacks, or maybe a character that just triggers like their their skill is that 
they put an attack buff or they put a damage buff on a character and then also pulls up their follow up attack to go even sooner. Like, just makes it go. It's like, if she used, like, imagine a character where they use their skill on Blade and then Blade uses his follow up attack, no matter how many stacks he had towards his follow up attack. He just, his follow up attack just goes. Right? Um, or use the skill on Clara and then Clara did like the counter attack follow up attack to a random enemy, right? Or Himiko, Himiko's just, her robot just went, even though nobody was broken. She didn't reach the break requirement limit. Uh, her to just spins her hammer, no matter what. I think that would be a crazy character, and that character would be a hell of a lot more valuable than Topaz, obviously, right? There is synergy there with Topaz, but I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't see the magic of this character yet. It's cool. But if you plan on maining, like if you're a follow-up attacking main team or follow-up team main, I highly suggest you find a way to get this light cone. If you can attain this light cone, significantly mm -hmm. increases the longevity, the, pow the power, the survivability of your follow-up attacking team. Any follow-up attacking team. Doesn't matter if it's just Topaz and Ratio. Doesn't matter if it's Clara. Any follow-up attacking team, this significantly improves that team. Not only does it do that, but it also increases uh, Adventuring's damage potential, changing what could be his own crit rate increase up to 100%, thanks to the talent we, we talked about earlier. Uh -huh. uh, leverage, I believe is the name of it. And now adding, what is this? The crit damage increase 40%. by 40%. Yep. Giving him a crit damage body piece, right? Increasing your defense by 40% exactly, yeah. already makes it so that you don't need a, a defense chest. You don't. Aventurine is going to have a natural high-ass defense. The Light Cone is going to give him a natural high-ass defense, right? 600. 40% times your base defense. You're going to be pulling in for free minimum 3K. Minimum 3K defense, right? Yeah. A couple substats. True. A defense boot. Maybe you get a defense uh, orb or a rope. And you're already above 4K. Crit damage body piece is 64%. This Light Cone gives you another 40%. That's 100%. You start off with 50%. You are now at 200% crit damage. Did I do that right? No, I didn't. Yeah, 150. 50%, right? Yeah. You're at 150% crit damage 150. for free. No substats in mind. 50% extra crit damage, which is not impossible. That's like, what, three substats? That's three crazy. Substats in, in all seven pieces that you have, or six pieces that you have, you can reach 200%. Most DPS characters cannot reach 200% crit damage as easily as this light cone will allow adventuring to achieve yep if his um if his multiplier like if his influence his damage influence is based off defense and not like hp or attack or some bullshit right because like japard's basic attack if i'm not mistaken is based off attack correct me if i'm wrong it could be defense if adventuring's is based on defense done done this is quite literally the best sustain in the game and his only drawback is going to be how many teams does he fit on in comparison to Fushuan? Yeah, Fushuan, you just throw on any team comp, almost any team comp, and she'll perform. That is my problem. Do I have, and do I have slash or am I willing to invest in an entirely new team comp? Maybe more than one new team comp. This is a new character, guys. I want to get my value out of it. I don't want like, oh, okay, yeah, I pulled, uh, I did a lot of pulls for this one uh, new character. He's like insanely good, but like only with these characters. Yeah, so like if you have these characters, like he's kind of su he just kind of sucks. Yeah, I wouldn't use him with Blade. Yeah, I w no, I wouldn't use him in that situation either. Nah, no, like that one, he's, he's kind of mid. That one, not enough follow-up characters there. It's like, what, what, what? if I'm pulling for a character and their light cone, guys, I'm going to need some, I'm going to need some, use, but I can use Acheron, unironically, I can use Acheron anywhere. I can use Acheron against characters, and I don't even have her E6. I can use her sans E6, only E2, against just about any, any weakness type enemy in the entire game, and she will almost, out damage them. I'll, I'll damage anybody else. That is ridiculous. 
That is ridiculous value. This character, I'm not quite sure I see the value. I see the value, I just don't think that the value is as high as people are saying it is. You know, don't get me wrong, his value is incredibly high, but his value is incredibly high if you meet a specific requirement. I won't compare to ho -Oh. His ho -Oh is on a different level. She heals and does some other stuff. Yeah. He's in a similar boat, right? Being a harmony character and things like that. Uh -huh. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I like this. <laughs> now, other options. Obviously, we talked about trend for Akron. I think trend of the universal market is a great, uh, great option for all preservation units. When paired up with Akron specifically. Yeah, it's the one where uh, but whenever the preservation unit is attacked, it'll put a fire debuff on the enemy. Other light cone options. The pards light cone increasing your effect hit rate so that this 100% base chance actually this won't matter because you're replacing the light cone Japar's light cone is good for defense but the effect hit rate probably won't matter because there's nothing else in his kit that revolves around effect hit rate so you're done mm, what are the other you only have four options for five star light cones texture of memories you don't need this increase the wearer's res by eight percent which <laughs> yeah. at s5 that'll turn into like 32 percent the wearer is attacked and has no shield. They gain a shield equal to 60% of the max HP. You will always have a shield when playing this character. If the wearer has a shield when attacked, the damage they receive decreases by 12%. You don't need that. That's the thing. That. It's, it's going to be a four-star option because the five-star options are either you have one of the... You have Japard's Light Cone, you have one of the Limited Light Cones, or you have the free one that you get uh, through uh, Simulator Universe, right? Uh, but that one, he just said, you don't need it. It's not, it's not great. A different one is definitely better. Four star options. Let's see. Day one of my new. Like, okay. If he has a really, really, really good free to play option, that increases the chances I'm going to pull for this character heavily. What I said, guys, is there is a 1%, 1% chance I pull on this character if I end up feeling like I also need the light gun life at s5 this is going to jump up tremendously it increases all type res of all allies this could be useful this could be useful for survivability landau's choice uh nope this is not worth it trend not worth it unless you're running acheron damage yep. dealt to all allies decreases by eight percent immediately restored they could all allies equal to 30 percent mm, you don't really need this, this no nah. me increase the wearer's he's not gonna be taking damage the damage of the wearer when they uh increase taunt from Jeffy's light cone. That honestly, increase taunt from Jeffy's light cone is really good, but it, it's only for I, honestly, I'd have to look at it like it's obviously the better option. Yeah, that might be decent, it would be a better option. 16% increases the damage of the wearer when they use their ultimate by 60%. Of the, okay, yeah, that sounds kind of decent. Enough, this is me, is probably going to be one of his better light cones. Yeah. Right? Only applies one time per enemy target during each use of the wearer's ultimate, so it hits everybody. This would hit everybody. Yeah, it's fine. Isn't there a new four star? There might be, but if they haven't revealed it, I don't want to read it specifically. It's MOC. There's also an MOC light cone. Are they have they been revealed? One already in the game. Isn't it We Are Wildfire? Is it not is it not We Are Wildfire? Or is it is it concert for two? It's concert for two, right? Destiny Threads? No, that's the new one. That's the new one? No? Okay, so this one is this one's here. Increase the wearer's effect res by 12%. For every 100, increase the damage dealt by 0.8% up to a max. Okay, and this one's good too. So Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I did see that. I was reading the MOC light cones. I was like, wait, that is really, that's actually decent for adventure. I think that's going to be his best one. Good light cone option. Best four star one. Day one of my new life. Good light cone option. This is me. I think if I had to order it, it would go Destiny's Thread. This is me. Day one of my new life. For the four star option, right? I don't think this is well bait. I don't think this is well bait. Concert. Scroll down. I'm I'm trying to not put something that's not revealed in the game. Is this this one's already in the game? Oh, nice. Increase the wearer's defense by 60% for every on-field character that has a shield. The damage dealt by the wearer increases by 4%. Oh, that's pretty good too. 16% damage increase. And that's not. It's not insane, dealt. but that's what decent. Is this? this is better. This one's better. Increase yeah, that's true. Damage dealt. 32%, yeah. Right? This one, it would just be better to get this. Destiny's Thread is better, but low defense stats. What are the defensive stats? At S5, let's see. 
Yeah, level five. Yeah, 48%. 48%, right? And at level 80, your defense is 463 versus they're the same, right? And unless this is not at S5. Is this at S1? What is S5 taunt surge? Let's check it out. Increase the wearer's defense by 32%, 8%. 463 what bro it says it right here it says it yeah the s5 is the, the, the s5 doesn't matter i'm i'm talking about someone said that the defense value was lower for concert versus destiny nah but they're the same they're the same right like unless i'm unless i'm looking at a completely different now nah, you're right yo whatever you're, yo you're right s5 make it different s5 only changes the values right yeah I'm not I'm not looking for the defensive percent value. I'm looking at the base value of what's on the light cone right now. Yeah. Concert gives defense, MOC cone gives effect res. Okay. That that's plain and simple. I think a 48% okay, yeah. or 32%, whatever it is, is better than 16%. Un unless this turns into S5 and this jumps up to like 12% per character. If this jump okay, so what would this have to be to equal 48% from Destiny, right? Because we know that. The Destiny Light Cone, right? 48%. This would have to beat that out. Either way. Either way. Either way. You know, we're just going to skip the rest of that. But either way, those are pretty de decent free to play options. Cool. That's good. That's good. I'm happy about that. All, all of the Light Cone options, or fuck, all the shields, if getting hit by any of the shields would trigger trend. If that shield in particular on any of your team would trigger trend, That'd be phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. But that's going to be it for me on the light cone video. Thank you, Eo. I think overall, you will have to make a decision because after Absolutely. entering, there may or may not be some characters that could also influence follow up attacking. Of course, of course. Like, guys, don't think that I don't know that once a venturing comes out, for sure there's going to be like an insane follow up character. Right, imagine, right? Imagine how sad I would be not pulling for a venturing. Oh, well, okay, I don't think I would care that much about not pulling for a venturing, but imagine that, like, I realized that I lost a lot of value uh, not pulling for a venturing because maybe Sam comes out, five star fire destruction, crazy awesome character. I'm going to pull him no matter what. I do not care what that character does, guys. I do not care what that character does. His, his ultimate could be like deal four damage um and uh flip a coin and if the coin lands on heads deal another four damage and that could be at like level 80 10 out of 10 traces i'm still pulling for sam okay i'm still pulling for him so i would be i would be a little sad of course if i didn't pull for a venturing and then sam comes out and actually he's a destruction character just like blade who is heavily you know, reliant on follow-up attacks for damage. Like he has he has really good follow-up attacks and he uses it a lot and it deals a lot of damage. And I'm like, wow, this will work really well with uh Topaz and Aventurine. Guess who I didn't pull? Um so so listen. I I might pull him. I have to decide. It's still a decision that I'm still making. And if you're making that decision too, let me know in the comments what it is. Thank you all for watching. Check out EO's video. Check out his channel. Give him a like on the video and give him a subscribe on the channel. Just like what you should do to this channel and this video. I really do appreciate you guys for watching. Peace.